No, we're ready, but I guess we're not here. Um, welcome, everyone. My name is Patri Derek Pan, uh, co-founder of Comirican Inc. Tonight, we have the honor of interviewing Maya Gillis Chapman. Maya, welcome. Hi, Derek. How are you? I'm doing well. How's uh, How's the bay? It's great. It's actually really sunny right now. <laughs> well, not now. It's it's becoming evening, but today it was sunny. I see. That's good. That's good. You been you had a good weekend so far? Yeah, it's been really busy. I was shopping mostly for obviously pageant stuff, but um, it's been good. Mm -hmm. So we we wanted to talk to you today, Maya, because Kamarikan recently found out about your endeavors, uh, most notably your your upcoming pageant there uh, for Miss. Asian Global uh, 2016 as a Cambodia delegate. Can you share us a little bit about um, this journey that you've been going through and a little bit about the pageant? Yeah, so the Miss Asian America, Miss Asian Global pageant is the longest running Asian American pageant in the US. So Whoa. it's really, yeah. <laughs> so it's big, it's really well respected. Um, there are two titles, obviously Miss Asian America, which I am eligible for because I am living in America. And then Miss Asian Global, um, which is open to the international delegates. And they actually just arrived. I got a bunch of text messages today saying they flew in from Japan, China, Hong Kong, Canada, et cetera. Um, and so all 29 of us will be vying for the title of Miss Asian Global. Um, I found out that I was accepted into the pageant in May. Um, I'm not really a pageant person. So I, I was traveling in Ireland and in Portugal when um, someone posted into the Cambodian School of San Francisco that they were looking for a Cambodian to represent Cambodia in the pageant because there hadn't been one for almost a decade. A and decade. There's hella Cambodians in the Bay Area, though. <laughs> I know. I don't... They, I guess they're, they might be shy, but I... I actually hadn't heard of the pageant beforehand, so maybe that was it. Mm. Um, and so I, I volunteered as tribute uh, along with a few others, and I flew back and I did all the interviews, and um, I was accepted. So for the fa past um, almost three months, I've been training for the pageant and going to rehearsal to learn about walking and answering questions um, and really uh, working on the platform. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Have you perfected the handshake? Not the handshake, the wave yet. The wave. No, I, I was trying it yesterday at the festival, and I don't think I got it. I, I'm more just, you know, wave like a normal person. I see. <laughs> so you've been, in, you've been in training for three months so far. About th three months, did I count that right? Since um, the end of May. It's almost the end of August. So, yeah. I see. Don't mind me multitasking, everyone. I'm actually just promoting this broadcast while we're still doing the interviews, and I encourage the six people watching us to share this link, right? Um, and uh, so three months. Wow, that sounds like my monkhood that I just went through. Did you have? It was pretty. I saw that. Was it pretty strict? Like you couldn't. You had a, had a strict diet. You had a strict like work exercise. I'm just curious what. Goes in. We've had pageant guests in the past too, but they haven't really articulated the process. Can you do your best of what exactly goes into the training? Yeah. So the week that I'm going into is the most intense, and there are more restrictions there. But in terms of the actual training, it's really up to you. So you show up on Sundays, and it's maybe five hours, four to five hours each, and they teach you um, how to pose for the cameras. We have different formations to get into. Um, if you see any of our photos, we look really organized, and that's by design. It's not random. Um, we practice walking. We practice how to thank people and accept compliments, but also how to kindly um, turn people away. Um, we meet our escorts. They are there to help us and protect us. We meet the committee. Um, we refine our platforms, we send in photos for the program book. There's a lot that goes into the training. In terms of 
diet and exercise, there's a group of girls that's really committed to that. Um, and they have been on diets and they exercise. I have, you know, a full time job. So, food, a lot of sneaky crime food. Is that part of your diet? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, I, I, <laughs> throw your fridge. <laughs> I actually, my diet is, um, let's see, I had like six muffins last week and two bags of Fritos. You actually took a tally count of what you Yeah, it, might, it was probably more. I have an intern that's really nice and leaves me a muffin on my desk every morning. And then she also leaves one for the person next to me. And I, I eat that one too. So, mm. um, so it's like two a day for me. <laughs> I think I caught you in the act. There was a cheat day last week because I saw a photo of you in Long Beach at the Plumby Noodle Shack, eat very <laughs> gluttonous food there, one of my favorite restaurants of all time. Oh, yeah, yeah I got go Uh Yeah, it was a sea crave in the Cambodia Town Film Crew Festival, or Film Festival Crew. Right. Yeah. So you, you, um, you're not like some, I'm, I've known some, some, some pageant contestants, pre-pageant, they're pretty strict with their diet um, sort of practices, right? And so... I caught you cheating one day. I just want to disclose that. <laughs> yeah, I, I stopped eating muffins and Fritos and ate Khmer food, so. Right. <laughs> Who was the last year's winner? Can you share this a bit about, like, some of the, uh, some of the work that, that, uh, that pageant winners have done in the past? Yeah. Um, so last year's winner was um, Pam Lahara. She's a good friend of mine. She went to Berkeley as well, Go Bears. Um, and the runner-up, Miss Asian America, was um, Stephanie, who was director of marketing at 500 Startups, which is a really well-respected incubator here in Silicon Valley. It's probably the second best one in the world. Um, so these are really accomplished women. I think the most notable winner is uh, Fala Chen. Uh, she's a superstar uh, in China, I believe, and she's won a lot of awards. Um, so it's, you know, I'm in a great company. I hope I can, uh, you know, make them proud. How many, how many uh, women are in the pageant? 29. It is the biggest uh, delegate group we've ever had. Uh, it's normally about 20, 21. Okay. So, but they've really been promoting us internationally. Like I said, we have people flying in from Japan, Canada, Hong Kong. Um, and so we accepted a lot more this year. And it's just, it's amazing, but it's also um, very intimidating. Mm. Why did you decide and commit to joining the pageant? Um, the original reason was I wanted to promote uh, Cambodians in tech. Uh, which I founded in 2014, and I felt that since this pageant was so well respected, it would be a great platform uh, to get Cambodians in tech out there, because I really believe in CIT, and, and so I just wanted people to hear our message and what we're doing. But further, this pageant is based on uh, beauty and brains, so uh, we actually have interviews before the pageant with our judges, and they ask us a lot about ourselves and our platform and really dive into our intellect. And so I am proud to be part of a pageant that respects uh, our intellect. And the girls are incredible. We have one girl who's fluent in French um, and has a PhD. Ooh. And another girl that's in her first year of med school at Stanford, um, someone that you know went to undergrad at Berkeley and got her master's at Harvard. So <laughs> it's pretty intense. Was that the criteria? Um, <laughs> I haven't read the, I've seen some of the patterns where like you have to be currently enrolled or have graduated. Is that part of the unlisted sort of pre-works as a pageant? They look for just yeah. successful people. I mean, there are criteria like age criteria, um, you could never have been married, uh, things like that. So, but they really do seek out people that are very accomplished outside of, you know, just looking pretty, which is why I joined because I was afraid that if I joined, people would think that I'm just, you know, a beauty queen walking around. But um, the fact that this pageant is about beauty and brains is why I was proud to be part of this pageant. 
I see. And uh, so you personally encourage women, young women, to part partake in these types of um, uh, uh, activities, right? Because I know some people have been pageants as 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 they evolve have been very controversial, right? In many ways, uh, you're saying um, you are a supporter and an advocate for women to to um, to enter these pageants, correct? Definitely. Uh, you know, I am first and foremost an entrepreneur. Um, I work day and night. Uh, on CIT, at m also my healthcare startup. Um, you know, we work 14 hour days and I'm so proud of that. Uh, and so I want people to know that you don't have to make pageantry your life. It's more about professional development, personal development, and really enhancing all the accomplishments you've already done outside of the pageant world and then shining a spotlight on it. Because if you work that hard, you deserve to be rewarded. Definitely, definitely. Trying to see if there's any people leaving questions on the side. We have like seven visitors right now watching us. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Uh, you can ask me questions on the side. <laughs> Maybe they can't access it. Yeah, for those who want to have a, have questions for Maya, feel free to drop it in the group chat box. Or I on our tab, we see a Q&A tab. Feel free to leave questions there. And uh, if it pops up, then uh, we'll... Uh, Oh, we'll let Maya answer accordingly. But uh, we'll continue with our uh, interview. Uh, so you're Cambodian-American. You grew up in the Bay Area. Um, and you, uh, you, shared, you said you went to your school at, at Cal, right? Yeah, I did. Great school. What did you, what did you study there? What did you, uh, are you done? Yeah, I graduated a few years ago. <laughs> um, I studied legal studies with a focus on international criminal law. Um, I was, you know... Future lawyer. That was the plan. <laughs> I have, you know, gone a different direction. But I was really passionate about um, international criminal law because of uh, the Khmer Rouge Tribunal going on. Um, and so I always wanted to give back to the Cambodian community, and I thought... Um, that was the best way to do it would be by working with the UN um, and working on the tribunal. So I applied for a fellowship in 2012. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Center for Khmer Studies of in Siem Reap. But I yeah. I came to UW, my alma mater there at the University of Washington, way, way back in 1999 when you were probably just born. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I was like, I was walking <laughs> by then. I don't know how you are, but I'm like two. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I forgot to, his name, Dr. Roland Fletcher. One of the, one of the, no, Felipe Cam. See, I still remember his name. Felipe Cam was the director of CKS. He came to University of Washington, nineteen ninety nine, circa ninety nine. It was like the first or second year of CKS. So I'm familiar with CKS pretty well. Yeah, so, so I was one of their fellows. What's up? I was one of their fellows, so um, they flew me out to Cambodia in 2012. 2012. Um, and I studied thanks to their fellowship. Uh, I got to attend a few of the trials. Uh, I did research. I met a lot of the UN lawyers. Um, and so I really did focus on international criminal law, but I decided to move away from that eventually. And so now I work in Silicon Valley. I see. I see. Try not to answer too many, ask too many controversial questions or opinion questions. But I am always curious when people talk about the Khmer Rouge, the tribunal that is, uh, when they're invited to uh, join us. What's your thought on it right now? What's what's your general thought on the uh, on the on the tribunals right now? As someone that was on site, I understand that. They are doing it to signal something great that, you know, finally people that were most responsible for these crimes are being brought to justice. I think that it's obviously a slow process and it's hard when you have to define something as most responsible when there are multiple people responsible to really find that type of full justice. So if that answers your question diplomatically. 
I was looking for. Uh, <laughs> I, I just wanted your opinion, your thoughts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> familiar with the Slug Grid that they're gonna that DC Cam plans on creating after the tribunal ends, right? Uh, I didn't know that. Yes. I haven't been in keeping up with what DC Cam is doing for like about a year now. So DC Cam, for those who are watching, DC Cam is the Documentation Center of Cambodia. It's the leading institute um, there in the country that has been the principal uh, organization that has been supplying a lot of original documentations related to some of the mass killings perpetrated by the uh, senior uh, surviving seniors. And according to the director, Yu Chang, who is a Cambodian American, uh, they plan on uh, convert, converting, creating, um, they already got the land by the government to create a research, a genocide research center and sort of university uh, school um, when the tribunal ends. But uh, I've tried to follow as much as I can. I heard that they're planning on doing another case. So it might be another two years minimum before things end. But uh, it's good that, you, you know, like a Cambodian American of your age is following what's going on in Cambodia. Um, uh, do you follow a lot of the developments in the country besides the Quirish tribunals? Here and there. Um, I think I was more plugged in when I was in school because I was actively studying, uh, you know, Cambodian history, past and present. Um, these days, it's mostly what appears in my newsfeed. So, you know, when, you know, unfortunately, a member of government is killed, you know, I pay attention to that. Um, which happens. Um, and I pay attention to the elections and a lot of the other things that are going on, but mostly the things that I are, am familiar with in my newsfeed tend to be things that are quite negative. It's normally the issues that are going on in the country, not a lot of the wins. Your last trip to Cambodia was 2012, correct? Did you make another trip prior or after? No, I've, I've gone, uh, my last trip was in November. Oh, November, yeah. pretty recent. And I, I, was in, I was told that you will be going back again this November, right? Yeah. Can you, tell us, can you share us what you plan on doing in this upcoming November trip? Yeah, so this coming November, um, CIT, Cambodians in Tech, we are hosting a hackathon, um, hopefully in partnerships with uh, Geeks in Cambodia, uh, cool. an organization that I have um, been talking to for about a year since my trip in November uh, and they've been really helpful and they have only been supportive about the idea of a hackathon so when one of our members from Seattle wanted to host a hackathon in Cambodia they were quick to raise their hands and say they're happy to help any way they can so we'll be doing that we hope to pin down a date um, I think when I'm flying into Seattle uh, to meet about this we'll have a date um, but it will probably be November 23rd-ish, so right before Thanksgiving. What is the mission of, Geeks, uh, of Cambodians in Tech, and can you share us uh, some of that, like current activities or future activities, and how can uh, people be involved? Yeah. Can Cambodians be involved? Yeah. Um, so Cambodians in Tech... <laughs> aims to increase the number of Cambodians in the tech industry through community, education, and inspiration. Um, you know, there are not a lot of us in the tech industry, and that's due to essentially uh, structural inequality. I heard about, was that uh, tech Cambodia, no? Uh, well. <laughs> no, I heard there was a rumor, sidetrack a little bit, there was a rumor a while back that Priscilla Chan, the wife of Mark Zuckerberg, was half yeah. Cambodian, because Chan is a very common also my last name, or oh, granted, my Chinese last name. So there was a rumor about two or three years ago, and you know, being Khmerican, they shot us those emails saying, "Can you verify? It? Can you verify?" It? So I had to do the the digging and research, uh, and of course, I never found any connection to her, any Cambodian connection to her background. But <laughs> so, so your goal at Cambodians in Tech is to identify and find more Cambodians um, to be involved. Um, with, with this line of work, correct? Yeah, not only, um, you know, to 
be involved with what we're doing to increase the number of Cambodians in the tech industry, but uh, we also want to uh, implement education, educational initiatives to help uh, the next generation of Cambodians break into the tech industry. And I think that's really difficult to do right now. You know, we need a lot more money to be able to educate, you know, Cambodian Americans in elementary school, uh, to teach them how to code or middle school. So right now I'm more in touch with the universities. Um, but it's a long process and I know this and um, I think I'm okay with it since one of my students from seven years ago, uh, Sokna, I taught English in Cambodia in 2009 and he was one of my students. Um, he actually joined Cambodians in Tech uh, obviously seven years after he was my student and so even though it's a long journey, I know it's worth it, so I'm excited. How can people learn more about this uh, organization? Yeah, so you can either ping me directly on Facebook, Maya Gillis Chapman, or you can go to our website, CambodiansInTech.com, um, and you can contact us there and see a lot of the members of CIT as well. I see, that sounds cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty excited to follow this progress because uh, I'm a... I consider myself a tech geek as well. Oh, that's why you're in the group. <laughs> yeah, thank you for inviting me to your group. Yeah. Let's sort of transition back to the pageant. Uh, or see if anybody has questions there on the side. I, I haven't really checked the side yet. Don't be shy. Oh, my dad's gonna, my dad's gonna peek the station. <laughs> <laughs> My dad's like, what is, what is my son doing right now? He's, he's, he's out. Did he come through? Did he <laughs> pop out a little bit? Where did he? No, he, he did come for like a second, but I think he disappeared. Now he's back now. <laughs> he just heard, he just hears the voice, but he doesn't, he couldn't see the video, the video side of the screen. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, the pageant, um, is this a traditional pageant in the sense that it has all the like other elements of the, that's typical and common in a pageant, like the swimsuit, the talent portion, the cue at the end, all that good stuff? Kind of, so I can explain. Um, the first part of the pageant is our intro it's, and um, our ethnic costume. So we come out in our ethnic attire. Uh, so I, that's why I was in Long Beach. I was at Kamai Bridal picking up um, a dress for that. Um, and then, we go away and then we come back in our swimsuits. Um, and then, you know, everyone loves that part. And then we go away again and we come back in our gowns, I believe. Like and then. Gowns, traditional gowns. Evening gown. Evening gown, evening gown, okay. And then, and this might be incorrect, but then I think is the talent portion. Okay. And so there are, you know, 29 of us and they chose 10 of us to perform a talent and, um, that is not judged. So mm. it will happen. It's more for entertainment, but it's, um, it's not, doesn't go towards our points and scores. And then we come back out in our gowns and they announce the top 10. Top 10. And so, yeah. And then with the top 10, um, we do uh, the QA and we present our platform. So everyone has a platform and we, uh, mine is Cambodians in Tech, and we present that. We have 45 seconds as well as an interview question. Mm. Give us a preview. If you do, is your closet nearby? Oh, no. <laughs> kidding. But if you did, if, 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 if any of your outfits was conveniently right next to you, Maya. They absolutely, they are. They're watching on this couch. <laughs> can, you just give, can we just get a preview? I don't know. I don't think it's against the rule books. So what are you going to be wearing on your outfit? What is that? I don't know, but it's what I'm going to be wearing. That looks like a headpiece. No, that looks like a yeah, headpiece for the traditional outfit, right? Kind of traditional outfit? Maybe. I don't know. Anything else you can share us? Uh, that's it. That time. Oh. <laughs> you have to come to the pageant on August 20th. Part of the live interview, you know, all these impromptuness. <laughs> Got to sell the tickets. Got to <laughs> give incentive. How much are tickets? Um, tickets. I'm sure you have it in your pocket right now. Yeah, uh, they're, I think with the coupon code delegate 20, um, they're $50. That's pricey. You better come with a 10 course meal. In a really? <laughs> <laughs> what does it come with besides 
all the beautiful contestants. That's it. We're priceless. No food. So. No, food. no. No food. Oh. You're well, like, I'm not going to go. <laughs> well, I'm out of town. But uh, <laughs> uh, So it's $50 of tickets. They can get it directly through you, or they can go to what's – what's the official website for um, Miss Asian Global? MissAsianAmerica.com. AsianAmerica.com. Okay. What is the talent portion? What, no, is what, what are you going to do? I'm not going to ask for a preview. I think you already okay, – good. <laughs> um, I'm going to say – I'm going to say something. Oh. You can control right now the nine viewers. If if you comment back to us saying that you want Maya to perform whatever talent she has planned, then might control, we might be able to sway her to do it. But what what do you plan on doing? I'll dance. be singing. I'm so, not gonna dance. It's not a, you're not gonna be doing a dance as no. part of your performance. I don't know how to dance. I just kind of like. Every Cambodian American girl know how to do the absara. No, no, I can't really. Okay, here's the test. Here's the test. I always put all the previous guests. <laughs> Every single one. It's very simple. It's very simple. Put your hand like this, and now in this other hand, just press it down. Let's see how much, how how far it can go down. Okay. <laughs> Don't trick us. Put it as straight as possible. Okay, so we can see how, we can measure how. See, look, that's pretty curvy. That that to me. This Cambodian you have, some, you have some dancing background. I'm sure when you were younger, your parents took you to Oakland Temple, the San Jose <laughs> School, and Lynn. no, because you're yeah, you're pretty flexible. Your hands are pretty flexible. That's how you tell a Cambodian hand, a Cambodian woman's hand. Well, I'm Cambodian, so we've established that. <laughs> but uh, so you don't have no dancing background whatsoever. No, I don't. How's your Khmer? Not very good. <laughs> 360 right now, I just spoke Khmer as an interview. You would fail? Yes. Tr okay. You can try. And, uh... <laughs> I don't want to embarrass you. I'm fluent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Uh, didn't you take classes there at Berkeley? Berkeley has okay. um, Frank, Clark, uh, Frank Smith, right? You yeah, were, so... Um, so, so share a bit of your back, Khmer background. Like, how Khmer are you, in your opinion? Um, I'm, I'm actually, I would say like pretty Kamai in terms of the fact that I've actually seeked out, um, my culture. So you have to realize like being adopted and being raised by Americans, I actually had to take the time and effort to learn more about Cambodia and the language. So I went from speaking no Khmer to um, you know, going to Cambodia and living there for a month by myself at the age of 18. Um, yeah, yeah, like in Persa, like not even in the city, like in the jungles, in the small towns um, where no one spoke English. And so that's how I learned uh, Khmer. And um, I continued to study it uh, at Berkeley. And then after Berkeley, I dropped by the Cambodian School of San Francisco to learn as well. I see. So you're Khmer. You have some formal background in Khmer language. That's what you're saying. That's what you're sharing with us, right? Because you, oh. you went, you did, you did courses at Berkeley, and then you did, you did program, you did, you had a curriculum there at the school in San Francisco, right? That's yeah. Cool. So, so wow. that's some. I I did it because uh, you know obviously I was curious, but also um, I would meet like elders and they really uh, wanted it's kind of respectful to show them that you can speak a little bit of Cambodian and so especially growing up with no Cambodian influence around me um, I'm actually pretty proud of myself that I can speak some Khmer. Can you introduce yourself to our viewers and the thousands of viewers that will be seeing it upon upload can you introduce yourself in Khmer real quick in 10 seconds? Yeah um so uh, she has an American accent. <laughs> I don't hear the American accent yet. I hear, uh, uh I'm, I hear like a southern <laughs> Cambodian accent. Southern Cambodian. Braveng, Braveng, Kandal. Well, you're from Kandal. Huh? 
I'm from uh, Kai Kandal. Kai Kandal, yeah, see, I, can, I, I knew it was, it, on a, in a, a Cambodian American accent is kind of distinguishable. I didn't hear from you. I heard that Kandal Swabian accent to me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, cool, and I, I, I know you said earlier that uh, during your time as an undergrad, you did do a lot of studies, um, learning about Khmer history, Khmer Rouge, pre Khmer Rouge stuff. Yeah. Uh, correct. Yeah, I used to be uh, like very, very well versed in that. I had to write research proposals um, where I analyzed the UN RGC agreement and studied the ECCC, uh, things like that, uh, the ICCPR and IEC SCER. Um, I don't know how. <laughs> yeah. All these things that I had to study. I don't know how well versed I am in it now, but I definitely spent four years studying that. I see. Wow. So that's that's not that's, that's really amazing because when you think about it, being adopted poses you a different challenge than say a Cambodian American like myself who grew up with Cambodian parents who in varying degrees, you know, infuses the culture in our homes during our you know, K through 12 education. And so we get to hear or see or be part of it as, as uh, more, more consistently and regularly than say an adoptee. Um, and uh, so I commend you, I definitely commend you. Do you have ambitions to con continue like going back and forth in Cambodia, to continue with the work within the, the Cambodian community there in the Bay? There's a pretty big vibrant Cambodian population there. What's some of your um, ambitions with the Cambodian community, regardless of, of winning the pageant, uh, like what's what's some of your ideas that you have uh, planned for for the Cambodian community in the Bay? Yeah, so uh, in general, yes, I do plan on going back and forth. I try to go once a year um, between here and Strok Khmer. Um, I will always continue to uh, work on CIT. That's what I'm really passionate about. I've been working on it since 2014, so that has nothing to do with the pageant, uh, regardless whether I win or lose. Um, and, uh, you know, Rata, uh, Kim, is really involved, uh, and Bong Malai, they're both really involved in the Khmer community here, and they've been introducing me to everyone. Um, I know they started the Khmer Women's Alliance, which I plan to be really involved in. And they're really looking for the next generation of Cambodians, Cambodian women especially, to take over and um, help share the culture. And so, you know, I would love to volunteer to be one of the people that spearheads that. Great, great. Yeah. Why, was it called Khmer Women's Alliance? Is that fairly new? Um, I think Sofaline was saying it was founded last year. No wonder, yeah, okay. Yeah. And she was one of the founders with Rata. Gotcha, so they're there in the, the Bay Area in Oakland, or uh, is it in Oakland? Um, I mean, it's all over. I mean, I think they have the gatherings in either Hayward or San Francisco, mm. um, but yeah, it's for Bay Area uh, Khmer women. Um, so, I mean, it's just phenomenal that they've been doing this, and I'm so glad that I can join now. <laughs> right. We're at the 40th minute mark. I didn't realize that we've spoken for almost 40 minutes. Uh, <laughs> can you share us a little bit? Um, some of the future projects or future trips that you want our viewers to be aware of. You shared a little bit about your November hackathon in Cambodia. Was there anything else you wanted to share with us? Yeah. Um, the pageant you plan I on? also. <laughs> Sometimes we get uh, the women to, to uh, reveal that. So <laughs> they, they usually don't do more one. They do more than one. So uh, anything you want to share with us? Future okay. ideas. So yes, in terms of CIT, I'll be in Seattle. I plan on going to DC and kicking off a chapter there and maybe Singapore. Cool. Um, you know, <laughs> some people are over there now. So um, that's really exciting. Um, we're also working on being a 501c3 registered nonprofit. Um, so yeah, CIT is going well. In terms of other pageants, uh, I'm a little old, so I don't know if I'm eligible for more pageants, um, but I've definitely, I don't know if I will qualify for this age-wise, but I've been considering doing the Miss USA circuit. Um, so Under Donald Trump? 
<laughs> no comment. <laughs> I know. I know. I don't think he owns anymore. Some one of them endorsed, right? So I don't know which one. <laughs> oh, the USA. So like, okay, cool. How about the Miss Cambodian American Dan Lowell? They're they're looking for the first. They're doing the first national one. Am I? I think I'm too old for that. No. <laughs> oh, is there age restriction? There is an age restriction. It was like 28. Um. 29. I think it was. We'll see. So we. I think so. Oh, 29? Yeah, I think it was 29. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I'm not one of the four, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I was seeing a lot of postings for that, and I'm so excited. Um, we'll see how this pageant goes, because if I am awarded a title, um, I can't take on any more pageants for, for a year, so. Oh, you can't, you can't run multiple if you win one? Or you can't? No. That makes sense. I never saw anyone do that. Okay. <laughs> So we'll see, but I encourage everyone to our, you know, Cambodian women to apply to your pageant because I think it's really good to shine a spotlight on the Khmer culture. And I know, you know, the Cambodian hustle is real. So the mm -hmm. average should share what they've been working on. Definitely, definitely. Well, wow, we're at maxed out at 13 people now, at 12 people now. Um, hopefully we have some questions. Otherwise, we're going to begin transitioning. Uh, begin transitioning uh, uh, the wrap up. Um, anything you want to share with us that we didn't get to talk about in this broadcast? You know, we talk about your your story a little bit, your pageant, your passion in Cambodia and tech, your Cambodia trip. Was there anything that you feel you wanted to add to your story for our viewers? Um, I'm just really excited to be representing Cambodia in this pageant. Um, I really wanted to stress that because I almost didn't accept the honor because I didn't know if I was the best person to do so. You know, like I said, I've been raised by Americans, so I've had to seek out my Cambodian heritage. But everyone's been really supportive and I've been learning every step of the way and I'm excited to continue to learn after the pageant is over. So. Definitely. How can people follow your work um, with the pageant and CIT? Like, do you have a fan page? Yeah. Do you have any, all your social media accounts public? Can you type it for us on the right side? Yeah. But tell us on the, this. <laughs> I'll do. I'll tell you first. Um, so I have a fan page. It's just my name, Maya Gillis Chapman. Um, CIT has a website, CambodiansInTech.com. Um, I have an Instagram that. I'm pretty active on, um, actually I just started being active on it. So it's uh, Miss Maya GC, and I have a Snapchat, which is also Miss Maya GC. So I'm, I'm everywhere, I do a lot of fun things. You follow me, so, you know, yes. <laughs> <Follow exciting. you. laughs> great, great. Um, well, we're gonna wrap things up. Uh, we wanna thank you again, Maya, for joining us, uh, sharing a little bit of your time. I know you're going to have a very busy schedule leading up to Saturday's um, pageant. We wish you luck. We wish you um, uh, stay in touch with us and share us your progress and the work that, that you do in your organizations. Um, yeah, thank you for your time and uh, any last minute uh, message you want to say to your, your fans, your followers, your family, your friends before we wrap things up. Thank you for tuning in. It really means a lot. So thank you. Well, thank you, Maya. Uh, thank you for those who are watching us. This broadcast will be automatically uploaded on Kamarikan's uh, YouTube channel. So feel free to watch it again in, in its entirety. Uh, and stay tuned for our next broadcast uh, tomorrow when we uh, interview Anita Chun, uh, chef here in the Seattle area. Someone that you should try her food when you're in town in a week or two, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll also tune in tomorrow as well. So Good. <laughs> Let's say bye to everyone that's watching us, all the 12 viewers. Thank you for coming on bye. Sunday night. And uh, we'll see you again uh, tomorrow. Have a good night, Maya. Bye. Bye.